Hey guys, how are you going? I'm Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to be looking at one of my favourite ever Makey Makey projects. Today we're going to be making a game controller for a retro pie setup using fruit and vegetables. It's really, really cool. So what you're going to need today is a Makey Makey board with jumper wires and a USB cable and a retro pie setup. Now we've got our Raspberry Pi running the retro pie operating system in our Pimeroni arcade cabinet. It's awesome. It's a fantastic bit of gear. And if you're not sure what RetroPie is or how to set it up, go and check out some of our other RetroPie tutorials. But you don't need this cabinet to, to follow. All you need is a Raspberry Pi connected to a display running RetroPie operating system. Now, take your Makey Makey board and you'll notice I've got these extra two wires connected here. And that's because I don't have all of the, uh, the inputs that I want with just one, two, three, four, five, six, buttons, so I brought these out to have extra A and B buttons. So, what you're going to need to do with your Makey Makey board, first of all, is reprogram it to work with capacitive touch. Well, that's not strictly true, you don't need to, but with standard resistive touch, as you'll know, you have to form a circuit with your body to the ground wire, which means you have to hold a cable and be pressing the buttons, and that's a little bit less intuitive than just touching something and having it work. So we can reprogram it using the Arduino IDE to work with what's called capacitive touch. Now, if you don't know what that is, check out our other Makey Makey tutorials. They cover how to reprogram your board using the Arduino IDE to work with capacitive touch. It's extremely easy, not hard at all, or you can use the standard resistive touch if you like. So now, all we need to do is configure the Makey Makey board to work as a game controller on the RetroPie, and because it's a HID device, it's a keyboard uh, device, but by default, all we need to do is map it the same as we would any other controller. So first of all, we're going to plug our fruit in and our vegetables and get that set up, uh, and then we can just get into mapping. So I have with me a bag of carrots and apples. Fantastic. Now, these two apples are going to be my A and B buttons. This carrot is going to be my directional buttons. Alrighty. Let's have a little wet a carrot there. It's going to be my left button. I'm just trying to shake some of the water off. That's going to be up, I think. Make this one the right arrow. And a little broken. And the down arrow. Cool. Alright, that's looking a bit like a gamepad I want. I just want directional. Uh, directional controls A, B, and start. So, let me get this, uh, try to cut off one there, and that's going to be my start button. Two apples I'm going to have as A and B. Right. That's looking good. Now, put the rest of your fruit away and take these alligator clips. Now, I'm going to be, you can use uh, whatever pads you want. You don't have to use the directional button pads for the directional buttons, it makes it a bit easier. But you can actually reprogram the Makey Makey so that the pads trigger whatever key send you like. However, anything's going to work because we're going to be mapping it in the RetroPie. So, I'm going to take alligator clip, connect it to the up pad, making sure it's got a nice firm connection. I've pulled quite a lot of that uh, cover, the rubber cover off the alligator clip, so it makes a nice connection with this carrot. in on the side there. And the pro trick is open the alligator clip jaws up first and then push it in. And that way when you let go it's going to clamp down on the fruit and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I'm just going to zoom out a little here so you can see the whole controller. There we go. All right now go ahead and connect the rest of your fruit up. So I've got left button here. There we go. Thanks to connect to this here carrot. I like carrots because they look like arrows anyway. All right, now right arrow. Back up to this guy here, and you can use anything you want really. It doesn't have to just be these fruits. Anything that's mildly capacitive, capacitive or resistive at all. So uh, carrots, apples, oranges, potatoes, lemons, anything you can think of. You don't even have to use fruit. You could draw it using a pencil to make your game controller. You could uh, use people as your game controller. Anything you like. The limit is your imagination. So 
Fantastic. Now I want to connect with the black arrow for start. I'll connect that to my space pad. And of course, make sure none of your fruit is touching because if it's touching and you touch one of the pieces of fruit, then it's going to conduct to the other piece of fruit as well and is going to give you, uh, you know, the triggers that you didn't want to be pressed. And the reason I'm connecting it all up before configuring it as a controller is if I configure it as a controller first and then go around touching all the inputs and pads and stuff, it's gonna keep triggering on the screen, which is gonna be a little frustrating. So I'm just doing this now. Have connected green up to green, that would have been a little bit more straightforward, but oh well. Alright, and there we have it our game controller. I've got two apples for A, B, my directional arrows, and a start button. Fantastic. Now, take your USB cable, connect it to your Makey Makey. Well, and I'm going to have to bring my Makey Makey over here because I don't think it's going to reach to my Raspberry Pi board. Never fear. Do a quick rearrange. There we go. So I've got everything connected up, make sure all my wires are nice and nice and neat. Well, as neat as they can be when using jump wires. I've got my start button, fantastic. My A and my B button. Up arrow key, fantastic. Now, plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Any of the USB ports is going to be fine. That's going to both power the Makey Makey and communicate with the Raspberry Pi. Now take a controller that you've already mapped and you'll need this to get into the start menu. So for more information on that, check out our other RetroPi tutorials. Otherwise, press start, go down to configure input and you're going to want to press and hold one of these and you'll see it register as a device. Fantastic. Keyboard, beautiful. Now we're going to press up to map to the up button, down to map to the down button, left and right. Now we've got start. Now we don't have a select, which is okay. You could add another piece of fruit as a select, but it's not really used in games all that often, so that's okay. I'm going to hold a piece of fruit to skip that one. And then for A, touch A, B, touch B. How cool is that? Touching fruit to make a game controller. All right, now to skip through the rest of them, uh, just keep holding, but press and hold each time to skip the next, uh, next controller. It's designed for a whole wide range of controller inputs, which is why there's you know, right thumbstick and left thumbstick and left analog up. Oh. Just hold it for long enough. So skip through. And we should be getting to the bottom now. Very good. Now, perhaps a good idea is get a permanent marker and write on your fruit what they are. Save confusion, but I know this is A, B, uh, directional pad and start. So press A. And we're all good to go. You can press B to get out of that. Now we can navigate through to get to our games, which is really, really cool. So today we're gonna to be playing some Super Mario Bros, which is fantastic. So let's fire up Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, what have we got there? Super Mario Bros. Ace jump. Ace jump, okay. And there we go. Oh, I died, oh well. Um, it's very hard to play with fruit. It's a lot different to a controller experience, but that's how you can turn your Makey Makey into a gamepad. It's super easy. There's no coding required unless you would like to use capacitive touch. We provided all of the code for you in the capacitive touch tutorial. And you've seen how easy it is, how quick it is. It's awesome fun. So I encourage you guys, uh, post in the comments below if you've made a really, really cool gamepad using things around the house, things uh, in the world around you. We'd love to see it. I'm Sam, take care, and uh, check out some of our other tutorials, guys. See ya.